The rise of Joey Logano in NASCAR is completely different than the path we've come to expect when drivers rise up the ranks. While his peers in grade school were learning their multiplication tables, Logano was out here winning late model championships. His family's quest to achieve their children's dreams to the fullest allowed for Logano to set the consecutive win record at the Atlanta Motor Speedway as a young kid. Getting the attention of the Mark Martin and a NASCAR champion that gave him the nickname Slice Bread at such a young age. In high school, he signed a contract with one of the biggest teams in NASCAR, which opened the door for him to win and compete at the top level of NASCAR and succeed almost instantly. Building up to his Cup Series rookie season where, as a teenager, he would outpoint the sport's most popular driver while still living at home with his parents. NRF Productions proudly presents Joey Logano's rise to NASCAR was like no other. It was kindergarten, an age where Joey Logano was learning how to read and write, that he would also learn how to drive. Beginning in midgets, at just the young age of six, he became a name to watch in his home state of Connecticut, winning the Grand National Junior Stock Car Division in 1997, winning the Junior Honda Division in 1998, and claiming the late model division championship as well as three, count them up three, three New England regional championships in senior stock, LT Mod, and LTB. Early on, Joey Logano was a kid like no other. It turns out his sister was also like no other, just in a different competitive sport. Danielle Logano was an aspiring figure skater, and to better her career, the Logano family would take their show on the road to the state of Georgia. That also benefited younger brother Joey as he was in the NASCAR breadbasket right in the heart of stock car racing. He would take great advantage of the opportunities in that area as well as the great proximity to racetracks in that area. Showcasing his talent on the track by winning the Bandolero Bandit Series Championship at age 9, the Lions National Championship at age 10, and a Southeast Pro Legends National Championship just before he became a teenager. That's not all. Joey Logano set a Legends car track record of 14 consecutive wins at the Atlanta Motor Speedway. Yes, this was a record that even the Dale Earnhardt could not match. Joey Logano was greater than the Intimidator confirmed. Finally, some heads were turning now that Joey Logano was in NASCAR country, and one of those would be one of the motorsport's biggest stars, the Mark Martin. The kid, 35-time winner, and at the time, one of the greatest drivers to never win a cup championship. That Mark Martin had some strong words to praise this teenager on his rise up the ranks. I'm high on Joey Logano because I'm absolutely 100% positive without a doubt that he can be one of the greatest that ever raced in NASCAR. I'm positive. There's no doubt in my mind. Around that time, Joey Logano would officially sign his first major NASCAR contract with one of the biggest teams the motorsport had to offer, Joe Gibbs Racing. And because of that, Logano would officially transition to the big boy cars. He would no longer be, you know, in the late models, you know, running the Legends cars at the Atlanta Motor Speedway. He was now racing in the USAR Hooters Pro Cup Series. And he would also race in one NASCAR Pro Truck Series race at the Half Mile New Smyrna Speedway. For 2007, NASCAR would make a change to the rules as any driver above the age of 16 could now compete in the Grand National Division. The major beneficiary here, why, it was Joey Logano. Beginning at Greenville for the season opener, Logano would run for the season championship. So you gotta step back for a minute, you know, teenage kid, first race in big boy equipment, the expectation was just to log some laps and come home with a decent finish, right? That would be the bar for most any other driver in this position, but Joey Logano, remember, he was a driver like no other. From the pole, Logano would lead over half the laps and win his first ever Bush Series East start. By season's end, everyone in NASCAR knew his name because he won five of the 13 races en route to the 2007 Series Championship, beating out Sean Case as he was no head case for a driver like no other in Joey Logano. But not only was he such a unique driver, but he had also become a new phenomenon, which earned him the nickname Sliced Bread. And he was given this nickname not just by any driver, but by NASCAR champion Randy LaJoy. After watching him race, he genuinely thought he would be one of the greatest drivers that NASCAR has ever seen. So now a NASCAR champion, although this is in a beta form considering that this is not a top three division, and getting the endorsement from a NASCAR champion, a Bush Series champion in Randy LaJoy, Joey Logano's name and career was on the rise.
2008 was the year that changed Joey Logano's life. On an early May Sunday afternoon in Rockingham, Joey Logano would officially make his first start in ARCA, seen as the fourth division of professional stock car racing. In a field consisting of Cup Series veteran Ken Schrader as well as future champions Ricky Stenhouse Jr. and Austin Dillon, shocker, Joey Logano would dominate and win his first ARCA race in his first career start. Joe Gibbs was salivating at the fact that this greatest prospect since sliced bread, he was baking up and he was almost to that coveted age where he was ready, 18. This was the legal age that one could drive in a NASCAR top three division race because of a controversy around a 16 year old Kyle Busch competing in a race weekend sponsored by Marlboro. Without that rule, Joey Logano probably would have been in the Nationwide or Truck Series full time by now. He'd have to wait a bit instead. And on May 24th, 2008, Joey Logano turned 18. Joe Gibbs would promote him up to AAA and put him in the number 20 in NASCAR's Nationwide Series. If there was a car to get a sampling of just what type of driver Joey Logano was, this was the car. Dave Rogers was flowing through the pipeline as a JGR crew chief and knew just what his cup stars Tony Stewart and Denny Hamlin needed to win on Saturday, amassing seven wins before Logano even laid a finger on one of their Nationwide Series cars. This team was incredible and Joey Logano was expected to be competitive and help the team win the owner's championship, though there was a bit of a pumping of the brakes in terms of expectations even though Logano was a driver like no other. I don't want Joey going into Dover expecting to win. We're confident that Joey is going to turn a lot of heads this year, even more so than he has in the past. In his first ever series start at one of the most challenging NASCAR tracks that the series has to offer, he would finish sixth. The next race of his, Nashville, dominating the first 64 laps of the race before Dave Rogers would make a call for four tires, something that would backfire as a majority of the field either stayed out or took zero tires. So that put Joey Logano back with the squirrels and in harm's way, something you don't want to be with, especially with a young driver in a fast car like Joey Logano. Welcome back to Nashville Super Speedway. The 20 car Logano spins around and has contact with the outside concrete. Joey Logano would get involved in a squeeze play mid pack after Chase Miller went up the racetrack, and that ended his competitive chances. Dave Rogers would take the blame for this incident. He vowed to do better for Joey Logano's third career start at a Kentucky Speedway jam packed full of race fans. Man, it would be a shame if Speedway Motorsports, they decided to buy up this place. You know, they give it a cup date. Then they decide to completely screw up the traffic plan, add PJ1, and nobody comes anymore. Man, that would suck. Joey Logano, starting from the pole again, had a car that was just so damn good. It would stick to the racetrack. It was not too loose or not too tight, near perfection. And you could tell with this pass on the Kyle Busch, the most dominant driver of 2008, he sailed right by him on the outside. The crowd erupted as he took the lead with 50 laps to go and he would not look back. Logano would open up an over two second lead on the field, cruising, absolutely cruising with the laps winding down. Casey Atwood to that date was the youngest driver ever to win a NASCAR Nationwide Series event. Joey Logano would trump that by nine months on that Father's Day Eve. Because the 18 year old and only his third start is going to win Joey Logano delivered his father Tom, the guy that really helped his NASCAR Cup Series career, the best present that he could offer. A NASCAR Nationwide Series win and just his third start. Tom expected that it would take 10 starts, but here Joey Logano was, already living up to his sliced bread nickname with a win at Kentucky in just start number three. Kentucky would be his only nationwide win in 2008, but he would not experience the trials and tribulations of other rookie drivers. In his first 12 Nationwide Series starts, get a load of these stats. One win, 224 laps led, and just one DNF in Montreal, which was a 17th place finish. Not too bad. Also keep in mind, these numbers were put up against cup-level talent. Kyle Busch, Carl Edwards, Clint Boyer, and Kevin Harvick raced every single week with all the skills they had accumulated in the Cup Series, yet here Joey Logano was right in the thick of things, leading laps and getting decent finishes against these guys. And what thickened the plot even more, just a tad bit more, was the fact that Dave Rogers, he was doing an excellent job. Still, Joe Gibbs Racing would rotate the crew chiefs like a carousel for that number 20 car. 
Joey Logano did all of this with four different crew chiefs, Rogers, Jason Ratcliffe, Wally Brown, and Doug Hewitt. 168 days after making his first career top three start, Joey Logano would become a top three division NASCAR champion that year. His 10th place finish in the season finale helped the 20 team cap off their dominant season with the owner's championship. And it's not like he was carried by cup talent. Logano started 19 of the 35 races and in those, he netted himself five top fives and 14 top 10 finishes. In many ways, he helped stabilize and carry this number 20 team to one of the most dominant nationwide series seasons in recent memory. With the rise of Joey Logano, the future of Joe Gibbs Racing was chock full of potential and full of young stars. In a few years time, Logano, Denny Hamlin, Kyle Busch, and Tony Stewart, they were going to be a super team to challenge the likes of Hendrick Motorsports. Unless there would be one major domino that would topple and further change the trajectory of Joey Logano's career. Tony Stewart saw his fan club numbers diminish to record low numbers because of his move to Toyota. Them cheating Yoders. It didn't make any economic sense for him to stick around with Joe Gibbs Racing, even as Greg Zipidelli and his championship core was still intact. Smoke would leave to become a part owner of the Gene Haas Cup team. That left behind one of the most coveted rides in NASCAR, the recognizable orange number 20 ready for the taking. This was not an easy decision to make, as Joe Gibbs, Greg Zipidelli, they had rigorous conversations about who would be the best fit to take over this car, to take the reins of one of the most coveted rides in the entire NASCAR Cup Series. August 25th, 2008 would be the date that forever changed Joey Logano's life and career. Just a few months removed from his first nationwide series start and nationwide win, Joey Logano would fill the shoes of one of the motorsport's biggest superstars beginning with 2009's Daytona 500. So as a young teenager with no cup experience, it wasn't the wisest of moves to go into this full turkey, especially as a teenager. With the financial backing from future sponsor Home Depot, Logano would attempt to qualify for five NASCAR Cup Series races. Seen as the development team for Joe Gibbs Racing, Logano wasn't expected to blast off like he did in the Nationwide Series. Instead, his expectations were to simply make the show, log some laps, keep all the fenders on it, something that you would typically expect out of other rookie drivers. And Joey Logano was no exception, even though he was a driver like no other. The regular season finale in Richmond on September 5th, 2008 was set to be his first Cup Series start. Driving a brand new car Logano had tested last month at the new Smyrna Speedway. One problem, Tropical Storm Hannah wrecked havoc on the southern part of the U.S. to the point where NASCAR could not get the Vortex Theory going in order to start qualifying and that meant that qualifying would be based on owner's points instead of time trials and that meant that Joey Logano would begin his Cup Series career with the DNQ considering the fact that this 2 team number one was not in the top five in owner's points and number two this was start number one for that team. So his next attempt would be at his home track, the New Hampshire Motor Speedway, and this was not with Joe Gibbs Racing, but rather the C-Level Hall of Fame Racing. Yes, a team with that name was not too competitive, but they had the owner's points that Logano needed. As qualifying rained out again, car number 96 would forever be remembered as the one Joey Logano would start his first ever NASCAR Cup Series race in. Though Logano was incredibly young, believe it or not, he was far from the youngest NASCAR's Premier Series had ever seen. Heck, Tommy Elliott in 1951 wasn't even of legal driving age when he made his first career cup series start at Altamont. So given at the New Hampshire Motor Speedway, it was about three hours away from where he grew up, his hometown in Middletown, Connecticut, a lot of locals made that trip up to see Joey Logano make his first career NASCAR Cup Series start. It was a highly anticipated race, and though he finished 32nd, Logano kept his fenders clean, he kept them on the car, didn't bang them up too much, doing what a rookie needed to do, you know, complete his first start and log some laps. Plus, if he was to end his career right then and there, he could say that he never finished behind Kyle Busch or Matt Kenseth in a Cup Series race ever. Joey Logano would officially make two more starts that season at Kansas with Hall of Fame Racing and at Texas with Joe Gibbs Racing, finishing 39th and 40th respectively. And that would end up being it for dress rehearsals prior to Joey Logano's first NASCAR Cup Series season.
Perhaps it was a bit awkward at first for NASCAR fans in 2009 to see Home Depot go from a guy in Tony Stewart. One tough cookie that wasn't afraid to ruffle up some feathers. In fact, he had a lot of altercations in the past. Many people thought he had anger issues. So it's hard to believe, you know, you go from a guy like that to Joey Logano, a teenager, and not exactly the guy you'd see turning wrenches and working with his hands in a blue collar sense like the company Home Depot was. It was more reason as to why Joey Logano was a guy like none other. Nine months ago, he didn't even have an ARCA star to his name. For Speed Weeks 2009, he would race Tony Stewart's car with Tony Stewart's team, Greg Zipidelli and all, starring commercials just like the big superstars, Chef Gordon, Dale Earnhardt Jr. He was right there front and center. And it was a hot topic of the media. Joey Logano as a teenager was talked about nonstop by the media. Joey Logano was an anticipated prospect like no other, even topping guys like Jeff Gordon and Kyle Busch. And this meant right here that there was a lot of pressure and an expectation to perform on the racetrack. What this 18 year old was going through at the time caught some of the drivers off guard including one of the best at that time Carl Edwards as this is what he had to say about Joey Logano. I personally haven't seen a guy come in that could have had that much pressure any more pressure than him. As a driver like no other, he would take on NASCAR's biggest race for the first time. As a teenager, in fact, he was the youngest driver to ever start the Daytona 500 at the time, and he would do so from the ninth position. He would ultimately find himself shuffled back in the pack, but Logano, who was racing wiser than his age, would methodically work his way through the pack. One of his first major experiences with super speedway style racing, and he was ultimately coming towards the front. Though one slide from Rookie of the Year competitor Scott Speed would send Logano down south to Miami. Trouble front straight away. Joey Logano pounds the safer barrier at the inside of the entrance to pit road. And it's a hard hit for the 18 year old from Middletown, Connecticut. As the youngest driver to ever start the Daytona 500, Joey Logano ended with a 43rd place finish, dead last. That hard hit at Daytona wouldn't be all the trials and tribulations thrown this teenager's way. In the first eight races of the season, Joey Logano had just one top 20 finish. For a car that was accustomed to competing for championships with Tony Stewart, Joey Logano was competing just to stay in the top 35 in owner's points. Quickly, the talk of the internet was that Joe Gibbs was seriously considering ousting Joey Logano from this car, replacing him mid-season though that rumor would seem to go against the values of the Home Depot commercial. Finally at Talladega, it seemed like the Pistons were finally turning in the development of Joey Logano as he earned his first Cup Series top 10 finish. As they say April showers, they bring May flowers, and May saw Joey Logano earn two top 10 finishes, and these were in two of the most challenging races that NASCAR has to offer, the Southern 500 and the rain shortened Coca-Cola 600. Joey Logano was finally getting accustomed to the NASCAR Cup Series, stringing together a solid stretch of top 25 finishes. And while this was not the peak of what that 20 car could do, he was getting better finishes. It was showing that Joey Logano was starting to adapt, show some of that sliced bread like no other mentality that he had carried throughout a majority of his career. Finally, progress was being made, and that would lead into one of the biggest races of Joey Logano's rookie season. The New Hampshire Motor Speedway was a special place for Joey Logano. He watched many races from the grandstands as a kid with his dad, Tom Logano. Now, they were on the other side of the fence for Joey Logano's first cup start at New Hampshire as a full-time driver. Graded to an impressive crowd of over 100,000 fans, an impressive showing for Loudoun, New Hampshire, Joey Logano was ready to impress his hometown fans. From the 24th position, this race would be a challenge from the get-go. Joey Logano was lapped by his home improvement rival on lap 143. He'd get that back when his other home improvement rival would lock it up and slam the outside wall to put the Home Depot number 20 back on the lead lap. Though it was short-lived as he was back there with the squirrels and the lucky dog was no match for another lucky dog. The Aaron Stream machine which cut his left rear tire, Logano ended up doing a loop spitting out and the caution would come out. Thankfully, cautions breed cautions as he would go a lap down, but due to the casualty of his Rookie of the Year rival, he would be right back on the lead lap. 
This allowed Joey Logano to come in and get some fuel, whereas the field was focused on getting to the end of their window. As the race wound down to under 50 to go, the heavyweights were making their final pit stops of the day. Jeff Gordon, Kurt Busch, Jimmy Johnson, Tony Stewart, you name it, made sure they were good to complete a 301 lap race. Though the New Hampshire radar was looking a bit bleak. Rain was on the way. Brian Newman, hoping to get win number one for car number 39, tried to stretch it out but just didn't have enough. Joey Logano assumed the lead and in that situation they were hoping Greg Zipidelli was praying to the racing gods that he and his 20 team would get a Hail Mary. Caution's out. And Joey Logano has the lead as the caution comes out. A Hail Mary they had gotten. With three to five laps left in the tank, Logano was leading the field as the rain picked up. Logano would end up making it on fuel to come down pit road as the leader as the rain picked up at a racetrack that did not have lights. It was looking like all the misfortunes on the day and Greg Zipidelli's gutsy call, a call of the year as labeled by Steve Letarte, it looked like it was going to pay off. Congratulations to Joey Logano. There he is, he gets his first career win, 19 years old, one month and four days. In just his 20th start, Joey Logano was a NASCAR Cup Series winner. His first win summed up a season full of ups and downs, New Hampshire being the biggest up of his career to date. Joey Logano's rookie season would continue those trends literally for the rest of the year. While all the publicity went to the Lowe's driver for his fourth straight championship, the Home Depot driver made a bit of history himself. No teenager had ever won Rookie of the Year. Guys like Jeff Gordon and Kyle Busch looked the part, but for Joey Logano, at the age of 19, he had officially become the youngest driver to ever win Rookie of the Year in the NASCAR Cup Series. Okay, yeah, his only competition was Scott Speed from the Red Bull Racing Team, but you've got to look at this from a deeper level. For a rookie driver to rally from being around the top 35 in owner's points, the danger zone to get a top 20 in the final standings, that alone was impressive. And you want to know something that was even more impressive about Joey Logano's rookie season? Joey Logano would outpoint the Dale Earnhardt Jr. in the final point standings. Yes, the Dale Earnhardt Jr., you know, the guy that was on plenty of magazines, that was out there living it up, the main superstar of NASCAR. Joey Logano not only beat the sport's most popular driver, but he did it while living with his parents the entire season. So yeah, if you want to fuel the Dale Earnhardt Jr. as overrated conversation, all you have to do is mention that in 2009, he got beat by a teenager still living at home with his mom and dad. Joey Logano is no easy lover. Many NASCAR fans could not stand him at the time and still cannot stand his squinty-eyed existence today. Still, you cannot deny that his rise to NASCAR was like no other. So anyways, this is Nathan for NRF Productions signing out. And just remember guys and gals, life's a beach and then you drive.